What's going on, everyone? Welcome back. And today we're talking about Roar and specifically using it in a really effective drum chain uh, for your beats and your music. And this is a really interesting topic because Roar is fairly new to Ableton Live 12. And if you've ever wondered if you should get Ableton Live Suite, um, this is definitely a huge reason why to get it. There's this, including many other modules that it comes with that are extremely powerful for sound design. And in particular, I feel like this is relevant to music producers if you're using drum loops in your music. So let me play you an example here. You can see my drum chain down below. Okay, and here, let's turn it on. Okay, so a huge difference, right? You can hear that it's changing the sound quite a lot. What's amazing is that what you're hearing right now is barely any volume difference at all. So I even have the utility plugin here at the end that's taking off five decibels to compensate for that. So it is pretty much equal in terms of actual loudness, but you're hearing so much more in that drum loop, right? It's almost like night and day. Why is this? Well, obviously, a lot of you can discern that it's also a little bit crunchier, a little more aggressive sounding, more compressed. And that's what all these modules are doing here in this drum chain. And of course, this is going to be linked down below. You can download this if you want to check it out for yourself. But basically, we're using Roar, which is a incredibly uh, in-depth um, coloring and saturation device. It has so many features. The amount of depth that goes into this, you really don't have to do much. I just run something in a parallel routing. So I have two different distortion modules. One is kind of focusing on the low end. One is focusing on more of the upper end or just kind of shaving off the sub. And they're both adding saturation. And then I'm over here in my mod matrix. The envelope follower is tuned in to really respond to the attack of the drums. And when I turn it on, the drums immediately come forward. And again, that's barely with any volume change. It's just enhancing it with the saturation and the coloring effects. And because you have this envelope follower that's extremely responsive to the transients in that drum loop, it's really useful to go over here and tweak these parameters with the drive and the tone amount because I can bring the snare out. The snare is actually kind of quiet in the mix. So if you're using a drum loop in your music and you're not happy with the mix inside the drums that are baked into that loop, you can use Roar to bring out the snare or to de-emphasize the kick. And that's a really important thing that normally is really hard to do. And then I'm adding on Drum Bus, which is another really great sounding um, drum module in Ableton. And it kind of has a bit of a buffering effect. So as I stack this on, it pushes the drums together even more. And then here is something also really new to Ableton, which is Color Limiter, which is effectively a clipping plugin. So if you guys have been following the Patreon, I have a whole series about mastering and really useful for hip hop and pop and EDM. We use clipping plugins to uh, create a lot of loudness. This is something you can use on your master bus, by the way. But I'm using this on the drums to give it an even more aggressive sound, like it's being pushed through a hardware device. The volume does jump a lot there, so then I add on utility to bring the loudness back. And now, all together, we'll A-B it one more time. So a huge difference, right? I am smashing the drums pretty hard as well. I just find it's like night and day. Um, you can always dial these um, things back a little bit and get a little more of the natural sound of the drums through. But um, it's almost amazing how much this enhances a drum loop that you might have in one of your mixes. And um, it's like night and day. 
And there's so much more that you can do with Roar in particular, like in this track here, I have an instrument stack that I designed using FM synthesis and the electric piano uh, emulation in Ableton called Electric. Kind of a cool, weird synth sound. But another thing that I did was I used Roar as a envelope processor or something akin to the really famous LFO tool uh, that a lot of music producers uh, use. And this is a very popular plugin, a third party plugin, um, but it is a little bit finicky to use. It's not the most, you know, you can shape your envelope and customize it in a lot of unique ways. That's really cool, um, but it is a little bit finicky to work with. And the amazing thing about Roar and Ableton is that this is a lot more than just a saturation device. This thing is basically an envelope uh, designer. If you want to create really cool effects with this thing, you can absolutely do it. So basically what I did was I bounced this synth out into audio and I stacked on a really cloudy reverb. Uh, here I'm using Valhalla Shimmer, but you could use the regular reverb in Ableton or a hybrid reverb in Ableton as well as another great one. And it's basically just adding on this shimmery reverb effect to the chords in that synth. So that's a really cloudy, reverbed up uh, sound for um, that synth sound. And then what I'm doing is adding on Roar um, and cleaning up the lows a little bit to create this effect. So you're getting this really rhythmic sound in essentially like a drone or something that's really reverbed and cloudy sounding. And it's creating this awesome parallel effect with the rhythm of the drums. Add back in the synth. And of course, I'll link this down below as well. This is basically a rhythmic LFO effect. I'm using two different LFOs, and it's very simple to set up on your own, by the way. All I'm doing here is I'm turning this one on, and I'm tagging it to LFO 1. So LFO 1 right here is already going to be turned on to sync. You just might want to adjust the rate, bring it up or down. I tend to bring it to eighth notes because I really like the way that sounds with certain drum beats, but there's also a triplet mode and a dotted and 16th mode uh, that you can experiment with, which is really cool. And then I use a square wave and I smooth it out a little bit to, to kind of prevent clicks and pops and attach it to over here in the mod matrix. So I just have the amount. That's the biggest thing. And then these things here just kind of adjust the sweet spot of the tone that it creates where it kind of filters out the frequencies. And that's basically it. Um, that's all you have to do. I then have the second LFO here, which is much longer, two bars long, and it's sort of just flowing in and out, and I'm just attaching that to the overall drive and the frequency of the device. So it's kind of drifting and it's moving around even more as it's chopping it. And, uh, and then I just clean up the lows. So this is also a really fun preset. It's gonna be linked down below like everything else I create that you can just throw on to a drone and then add this sort of chopped up drone sound with your drum loop and it creates so much dimension and variety in your sound. And uh, yeah, this is just using a couple different devices. A lot of people don't know about Color Limiter. That's a brand new clipping uh, plugin in Ableton that's amazing. And um, yeah, so these will all be linked down below if you wanna check these out. There's so much depth to Roar in particular, and we're really just scratching the surface here, but it is an exceptionally well-tuned uh, device for saturating your drum loops and just making them sound way better. Even if it's a great sample, you can get so much more out of it using this device. So hopefully you guys enjoy those presets, try them out for yourself, have fun with them, and I'll see you all in the next one. Have fun making music.